Hey, this is Jeff Pilsen of Foreigner, and you are watching The Spiel, my favorite. It's all my daughter up. knows. I mean, she's 10, and I've been in the band 10 years, so. Which one's she singing the most? Which song? She loves Jukebox Hero. Does she? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, when she was two, was oh, Juicebox uh, Hero, by the way. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jason Pinkston, and this is your Backstage Pass. On today's show, we make our way backstage to talk with Jeff Pilsen of the legendary super band Foreigner. When we walked into this room today, it was it's different than any interview we've done because it's kind of an awe moment in that when you have the ability to appeal to three and four generations, you've got something. And on the spiel, yeah. our staff the other day we all sang your songs. Yeah. Is that cool or what? It's the reason why we can still do this. It's because the, the songs are intergenerational and they're timeless and we're a lucky band that we get to play these songs. Introduce Absolutely. yourself, tell us the story. My name is Jeff Pilson and I am the bassist of Foreigner. I've been in the band for 10 years. Uh, I was in a band called Dokken in the 80s yes. and I played with Ronnie James Dokken, in the 90s oh and my God! Yeah. So, um, <laughs> So I've been doing this a very long time, yes. um, but I love it, and music is my life, and playing for people like this is, it's what I do, and I'm very, very happy to be doing it, and I'm very lucky to be doing it. Yeah. Isn't it true you're getting ready to go overseas to do some shows? Well, I'm not packing yet, because that's October, <laughs> <Okay>. but... <laughs> it's right around the corner. We, we will have gone to Europe twice this year. Uh, in January, we're going to Australia, New Zealand, yeah. and in next March, we're going to South Africa. Oh my! And yeah, we go all over the world. That's the wonderful thing about Foreigner; it is a worldwide entity. Hence the and name. That's great. I mean, you knew. Yeah, we are a foreigner yeah, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it's funny because uh, this day and age, you think foreigner is like, oh, is that a negative connotation? No, you know what? The <laughs> band in its inception thought about that and it's like boom let's be hot here let's be hot there let's be hot well everywhere. and and part of it was too there was three english guys and three americans so you know there you go you know somebody was always they're not going to be called the americans that's for sure no. right? in no. 1981 i was slow dancing to i've been waiting for a girl like you who hasn't danced to that okay? i don't know but i that was one of my favorite songs oh my gosh yeah, for 14 weeks in the top five i know that great song crazy. that's a really great song. really great song okay i got to talk to you about that song that song doesn't contain much realism because when you're dating and you're young and you're impressionable and you're listening to it and you're like, oh, my guy's going to be that. And no. It's a shame on you. <laughs> when you sing it, it's BS. False expertise. Yeah, but do you want to know something tr true? When Lou Graham was doing the vocal on that, yeah. um, there, it, was, it was a one-take vocal. That oh, vocal. Wow. I mean, there might have been a couple of fixes here and there, but for the most part, that was a one-take vocal. And when he was singing... Some woman walked into the back of the studio right at the beginning of the song and stood there and he just was transfixed and he sang right to her. Stop. And when the song was done, she walked out and nobody had ever seen from her again. And at the end of the night, he's with her and they're married today. No, she's no. Going. no she no, could no, have no. been a ghost. He's, he's, he's still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just let's, let's do it like crazy. so long. You sing, sing it. Which one? Give me that one, baby. Get the lyrics, you remember. Give it to me. It's so long. So long. I've been looking too hard. I've been waiting too, too long. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh. See, I listen to all the songs on the way over to this interview. Oh, cool. So do you understand then why weren't you singing it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But overseas, there seems to be such a thirst. There really seems to be a desire for more of what we have. Do you find that that's your largest audience, your most um, accepting audience, or do you find it here in the States just as much? Um, kind of a combo plate. Um, you know, when, when we first regrouped the band in 2005, um, we were actually having a hard time getting bookings in Europe. Really? Europe was not all that excited about us. Okay. Then we went there in 2006, and, and Mick Jones took a personal stake in making sure we go over there and doing whatever it took. Yes. So we went a little out of pocket to get us over there. And we went over and sludged it out, but we also played this really big festival called the Bang Your Head Festival. And, um, you know, it was a lot of real heavy rockers, but we got up there and stole the show. I'm not, I'm, that is I'm hot. not, you know, trying to blow smoke up anything, wow. any, any orify, but, um, <laughs> but, orify. but yeah, 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 um, but, but it, it worked and now Europe is a huge market for us. We go over there and do 5,000 seat, you know, arenas over there. It's amazing. That's awesome. 
you know, I saw when we was coming in, a local choir is going to sing oh, right, on a song tonight. Right. Now, does that happen everywhere you go? Most. That's most places. Awesome. It's a, it's a, it was one of our manager's greatest brainchilds yeah. because what we do is we work with schools. Yeah. And, you know, because of the funding problems at schools now, um, you know, the first thing that they cut is the music. Sure. Yeah. So sure. we're trying to help the music programs, and we they, they sell our CD here, and we give the proceeds to their school. And wow. And that helps them. Good for you. They come up and sing the song with us. It's a win-win for everybody, and we're having a great time doing it. Can I give you some advice? If you happen to get ready for the song, and they're getting ready to count it off, scan the choir. If you see this one, put her out. Put her out. She's I poor one. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like a well, stowaway at that point. Yeah, it's, they it's walk ugly. on during the song, so if she does So it, we can just walk on. It's, it's too late at that point. You won't Note want to, to stop. Note to, to self. Yeah, we'll just walk on. <laughs> when you produced music way back when, and looking at how it's done now, because we've got the internet and all those things, are you happy the way it happened, or would you almost have wanted to release in this day and age, or you wouldn't trade anything? Well, Where especially because I can't, I don't want to trade anything, right. but I mean, Just I, look at I, it the loved, way things are done now. I, I loved the process back then, and I actually missed things about the process back then, and which the was process. a little more, it was a little more organic, and it was a little more people yes. working together. It was like the band and little soundproof rooms, and you did it yeah. together. Well, and it yeah, was working yeah. hard, and you had to go there. You had to go there and prove yourself, yeah. and today and, you upload. And it was, it was a very special process making records back then, and I do miss that. Yeah. I think the technology now is amazing, and I mean, I have a wonderful studio in my home that there's no way I could have had 25 years ago. And um, I still try as often as I can to recreate that environment, uh, making music, but, but uh, it isn't the same. It's definitely different. Um, records are done a little differently now, especially with some, a lot of the newer bands. Yeah. Which is okay, Everybody, every generation has their own thing, but um, I do miss some of that. Uh, I just think, but but I hold out hope that somebody's going to come out there and everybody's going to get so sick of the computerized, that's what it is. automated that's world that we live even, in. Even I can sound somebody's good. Somebody's going to break this day and age, yeah, yeah. Yes. That somebody's <laughs> going to break through with something very organic and yeah. real and it's going to freak everybody out. It's going to change everything. And once they learn how to monetize that, then you're going to find a new generation. Because so it's always be been so weird to me for duets for someone to go in in a different city, maybe a different country, yeah. and lay their harmony part down, you're not even with them. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, and, and you know, a lot of times that works, but but then you know, you, you're never going to get the magic that you got, you know, with sure you together. Know, some of the great duets of all time and so. memories. Yeah. Are you the one to do that? You've been there. You've done that. You've come through the computer well, age. Can you bust through? Well, I hope so, and I thank you for even bringing that up, but. But I honestly think for it to become a real phenomenon, it would have to come from a newer, younger band because that's how phenomenons get distributed. But why? We don't, you guys because got we the don't, hits. Because the system right now is not set up for a band of our age to come in and win over a whole new young audience. The, the, the mechanics are just not there. They're just not in place. But if a young band were to take that principle and come out new with the machinery behind them, they could do it. That and band. You're, you're obviously going to be in it. So what's the well, name? Well, I'd of love the band? to be in it. Yeah, the, the name of the band. Yeah, the Jeff Pilson group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The so. Jeff Pilson trio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I don't know, and um, but I hope that we all find out soon. Let's talk about uh, just just really quickly because you know if you Wikipedia or Google or whatever, this was a British American rock band, and it's interesting if you if you look at Foreigner, there are past members, there are present oh members, but. and there are a lot of them. But you know what? I guarantee you that all of you guys have reached that mark of excellence. That's the only way you're playing in the band, correct? Well, I mean, you know, we do have our leader and founder, Mr. Mick Jones, and you know he he's the one that keeps the standard real high and. Uh, He's the one that you know calls the shots, and uh, because of that, I don't think the standard will ever go any lower. Now I know you love playing with the group you were in, but when you knew you got the foreigner gig, was it like, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. It, it happened very kind of casually, almost. Um, they called me up because uh, Jason Bonham and I had played together in a movie in, in 2000. It was a movie called Rockstar. And we, we had a really good cool. yeah. And we, okay. we had a really good chemistry in that movie together, and we worked together well. So when he started working with Mick Jones in 2004, they just called me up and said, "Hey, you want to come down?" And d didn't even know if it was going to be Foreigner or what. <laughs> and we got together and we did a show uh, in the summer of 2004, yeah. and it was just so electric. And Jason pretty much convinced him to revamp Foreigner and bring it back. And and ever since then, it just gelled immediately. We got Kelly in March of 05, and it's just been going nonstop ever since. Your past band, weren't you like the lead 
song in that like Freddy Krueger nasty. Yeah, we were, yeah the I night, remember. No, yeah, oh my Dream God. Warriors. It was, that was oh Nightmare on Elm Street God. Three. Yeah, that we, we was the bomb. And, and you know what's funny? We were the first band to ever put a uh, our video for the song yes. on the the video box that you know you sold so for the cool. VHS. Yeah, we were the first. Band so to if do I go that. rent that tonight, you're gonna get some royalty at all? Uh, I would get. <laughs> A a rent, well, not, a rental, not out of a rental because okay. they would have had to buy it. That's right. But when they when they bought it, you I got, got a little bit. my little whatever. <laughs> you know, it's um, really cool. I, I love country music. Uh, I've interviewed about every country star there is. So you're actually my first rock and roller. Uh, I am so I'm pumped. Flattered. I'm flattered. Uh, very, very flattered. Thank well, you. I hope you guys enjoy the show tonight. I think you will, but I'm, you know, really Well, hoping. when Hot Blooded comes on, you know, that's me, so I'm going to be out <laughs> screaming. She's okay? just doing this again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. really flashing. The, but... you know, <laughs> okay. It, you're obviously into supporting the, the arts locally. Yeah, and yeah. Musical yeah. Absolutely. If that, if that young person is watching and they just need that little bit of, um, what would you say to them right now? I I would say do what's in your heart. Follow your heart and, and listen to it. And, you know, <clears throat> if that means, you know, you've got to uh, create your own thing, whatever it is, do it. You know, just don't let anything stop you and, and do it. Listen to your inner voice. Yeah, God bless you and God bless you. can't your thank you enough for your time. I know well, thank you I know so it's much, tough guys. Road, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Rock on, baby. We will rock. Can you do tonight. a little head, head I will, Oh, I will. I will. I'm Jason Pinkston, and this has been your backstage pass.